and I was actually living mostly up in San Francisco, and so I actually didn't receive the call. They didn't know where I was. I, um, a reporter from the Mercury News called up and mm -hmm. said, uh, have you heard? And I didn't quite believe her. I woke up, I said, oh, it can't be true. No, no. Because you know, it's, it's a, always in many people, not many, a dozen people are so eligible. And then uh, she said, well, let me read you the wire. And she read me the wire. And so then I finally believed it. And then we drove down here. But um, it, uh, they do it very well in Sweden. The, um, they build up the whole week. Various things. It gets more and more elaborate. And the last day, uh, while you're there, they give you a car and a driver, and usually a young person from the diplomatic service to help you. So you have this thing which <laughs> the better off people in the valley have a car, and, and you, they drop you off at the restaurant. There's no parking problem, and mm -hmm. you call when you want <laughs> to. That is someone I'm not rich, but <laughs> there is a great advantage of being rich. At the last night, you're at this big dinner, or like the last night, the king and queen are there. And in his will, uh, Nobel has the physicist first. So the physicist sits next to the king and queen. And uh, it was strange because he's very, very shy and he doesn't talk much. But the queen, who actually is Brazilian, is very vivacious. So it was a very strange conversation. He keeps thinking you want to say something to him, but he doesn't say much. Uh -huh. He's sort of an outdoor guy and a hunter. Uh -huh. And then uh, there was a thing spread around, where you can't leave the table. And what happens if you have to go to the bathroom? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out you can't leave the table. It's a, uh, but it was a, a spectacular thing. Uh, simplicity yeah. is, is a core concept in Zen. And uh, so yeah. I wanted you to, to Define simplicity in your own words and, and tell us about well, it. Well, simplicity for me comes from the ability to visualize something I'm building or you think you can build or experiment. So you ought to be able to hold it in your mind. If it's very complicated, and uh, examples of complicated things would be uh, uh, biological molecules. I, I don't work in that, I certainly can't hold it. But the things I do, uh, I held in my mind. Well, for example, over here, I don't know if you can get This was actually our last experiment, and that's the electronics. And I won't go through it all, but it had a simple concept. We were dropping drops through here. We had a dropper up here and a camera looking at it. But you see, the way we make the whole thing, simple parts, square, and that's... And that's what we're looking at, and that's what I always look for for new experiments, too. So you get, Drew, you get a, a, a pleasure. Mm. I always say you should get a pleasure out of it, because sometimes it's going to cause you a lot of trouble, as I think painting probably does. But you should get a pleasure out of building it and looking at it. And why is simplicity difficult to achieve? It's, uh, what happens is, it's easy to make up an explanation which has a lot of parts to it, mm -hmm. or to conceive of a very complicated experiment, and sometimes you have to do that. But physics uh, is the simplest of the sciences, although mm -hmm. people think it's hard, that's because it's, it's mathematical, but it's the simplest of the sciences. One of the things that's important in, uh, in Sumie is the negative space, and what is that? Th that is the space around the brush strokes, yeah. what's not painted. Yeah. And uh, in, in Sumie and in Zen, silence is important, uh, space is important. And I thought this might be related to your idea about fast talkers and fast <laughs> thinkers yeah. being detrimental because they, just filling up the space with lots of words. I wanted to know what you thought about that concept. Well, I, I haven't thought about it, but it is related to that. Uh, yeah, I, the other day I have some new idea about looking for this thing called dark energy, mm -hmm. which most people think you cannot detect on Earth. Mm -hmm. They're probably right. So I, was, I, uh, I usually have lunch with friends. There were two people there who actually were theorists. And I was telling them how I was thinking of doing it. And they said, oh, but what about this problem? Uh, I think they vibrate too much. What about that? And they were pleasant. But I gradually went into silence. I didn't argue. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. <laughs> say, well, I don't know. I said, well, you know. I just listened, and they went off the topic. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a, there's a big value in, 
Yeah. Now, an interesting area which I don't know anything about is also mathematics. I don't know if you've talked to mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Those who work on these very hard problems seem to be silent for years. Mm -hmm. They're just working on how. I mean, they're an exception. Yeah. But the actual yeah. physical negative space, mm -hmm. I, that's, that's an interesting concept. You know, it's an interesting concept because we're so puzzled by space now. Mm -hmm. The so-called dark energy mm -hmm. is very puzzling. It, what is it? Is it there? Isn't it there? It's, yeah. yeah. So emptiness in modern physics is not really empty. Mm -hmm. There are things there, mm -hmm. but is there some other thought about that? Yes, and um, the philosophy of uh, analyzing emptiness has yeah. had a h huge impact on, on Zen. And has it? Emptiness yeah. in what Zen is not necessarily empty either. Emptiness is really full. Yeah. That, th that's What's what, an example? Or? Well, I mean, uh, a, a, a poetic or an aesthetic example is that when you look at a cloudless sky, yeah. that's a sky that's filled with uh, potential. I mean, there's no cloud that's, that's yet it. passed through that yeah, space. Yeah. That's Anything could happen. Anything, any yeah. shape could unfold. Yeah. Very but in modern physics, because the emptiness or the, the vacuum is not empty, and it's very, it's things we think keep popping out of it and then popping back. They, they keep popping out of it and popping back. So the emptiness has a potential, mm. and exactly. it's very puzzling. Uh, Okay, we, we don't understand it, and when people try to do some calculations with it, they always get infinities, which we can't deal with. <laughs> we just don't deal with that. So you, people try to subtract two infinities, which is sometimes successful, but not in this field. But there's a large interest in, uh, in that. Well, it, it also relates to another key aspect of Zen, which is negation. I really felt that you gave the quintessential example of this when I heard you speak the other night yeah. at, at the tech you gave ten laws and you went through one two three four five six seven eight nine and the last law was beware of old timers right. like myself in other words That's don't right. listen to any of the previous laws that have just preceded this <laughs> law know. I thought that was brilliant because that was an example of, of, of negation and I wanted to know if you could talk about negation in well, the sense okay, like why it's is important to just keep turning things upside down and saying because, no and the not and because we self-brainwash. Mm -hmm. we, we work out something which we're happy with or our friends are happy with, and then we stay with it. And it might be right, it might not be right. And it, it, this question of how you can yet have confidence in what you're doing but still be questioning it, it it's again a paradox, mm -hmm. which um, is again, uh, is very interesting to me. Um, now, what sometimes I worry about is that um, younger people, because the education system is so good, they learn a lot of our stuff early. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the same problem in art. I mean, how do you teach people mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. without sinking them into some whatever you're into? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's again a Mm -hmm. It's again a problem. Yeah, in fact, art and science are, are deeply linked, although they end up being compartmentalized and separated yeah. out in our culture. I mean, many of the physicists that I've known have talked a lot about music and art. You, uh, Pro Professor Asharoff talks about yeah. Feynman playing the bongo drums. Yeah, yeah. And I, I knew, I uh, had the pleasure of knowing Max Dresden very well. Oh, my God! I knew Max very well, too. 